All right, so you need to come over here. Put that arm down. Yeah, that'll be okay. Okay, stand up. Oh, let's flip this around, that doesn't look okay. Okay, that looks about right. There we go. Oh, no, flip this way. Okay, there we go. Oh, I bumped the camera. I bumped the camera. All right, here we go. What's going on, guys? Today I'm gonna to take this lighter and turn it into a robot. This is an electronic striker. Lighter versus uh, something like a flint. So no little wheels. This is the second time that I'm doing a challenge using only one piece of trash. I previously built something out of a spray bottle and I challenged myself to use only the materials of that spray bottle. So in a similar way, this time, I'll only be using the materials that come out of this one single lighter. Of course I'll be using paint and super glue, and I do use baking soda as a binder for the super glue. But apart from that, all the materials come from the lighter. And if you've never taken a lighter apart before, which I never had, this was my first time, there are so many little bits inside of a lighter. So many really cool things to use. I was feeling a lot more optimistic this time than I was about the spray bottle. You can see some of the parts here. Here's that electric striker. You can see it in action there, arcing through my finger. Yeah, I was inspired to do this project by another guy I saw on Facebook that built one. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the link to that post of his down in the, the description below if you want to go see the inspiration. Of course, I went a different direction, but using a lighter to make a robot was a really cool idea. And I wanted to give it a try and see if I could make something out of one. And just when I thought I'd broken down this lighter, there's more little parts here and there. Oh, this is an interesting one. All right. I think this plastic is gonna be a really good source of material, different shapes here and there. So I'll start by chopping off these little wing looking shapes. I started by using my jeweler's saw, but it got stuck and gummed up in the melted plastic. So I eventually switched to a hacksaw, which was still a bit annoying to use. It did the job, but it made a big mess. Oops, that did not break where I wanted it to. All right, cutting tool number three. Got out my rotary tool and started using the fiber reinforced cutoff disc. And just started piecing together some things. Here's two chunks of the plastic that I glued together with some super glue and baking soda to make the torso, well, the front of the torso anyways. And you can see I'm using that baking soda just as a kind of gap filler. Super glue alone would be an extremely weak connection. I glued those little plastic wings to his head. And this little round piece will look pretty cool to cover up the hole. These tiny little springs. I stretched one out and stuck it in his head, coming out. There we go. And then I started to make this kind of like arm sword shape. One of his arms is going to be a sword. When I broke that plastic piece, and it, there was just a jagged shard, I thought it looked pretty cool as a weapon. And then I glued some bits together for the upper arm there. You can see. I thought the part of this striker, this metal cylinder coming up, I thought that would be a good neck. So I grabbed a five and a half millimeter drill bit, 
and made myself a neck hole in the head. There it goes on the front torso bit. And I used the bottom of the lighter to make these shoulders. And I'll glue them in place. After drilling a hole in the shoulder part there, I thought it would be a good way of making a movable joint. So his right arm will move. I'm gonna swivel and what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look what was inside of this yellow plastic piece. There's just no end to the bits of this lighter. I made this little flap for the back of his head. There was a huge gap here, so I just wanted to fill it up with something. I need to get rid of that plus and minus detail on the front of his face there. I thought it'd be cool to give him some teeth, but I still need to fill that hole. So I'll put some super glue in there and a light coat of baking soda and I'll sand it down as best I can. I have some 800 grit sanding sponge here that's okay uh, but it looks like he has a little mustache or something so I continued that strip all the way around to give him a chin strap that little tiny peg fit right in you can see I cut some more chunks off of that plastic container of the lighter that'll be his hand glued together, notched it for a couple fingers there. And there we go, both arms are done. And there he is with his head. The head and the two arms are still moving, so that's pretty cool. I filled in some voids with some more of that plastic on the back. And then it was onto the legs. This is the only part of the project where I kind of cheated. You can see that that hole is completely filled in. Uh, what I did was I filled it up with the little chunks of plastic that came from hacksawing the lighter to bulk it out, but then I did the final layer with baking soda. So I guess I kind of sculpted or filled in a large void with the baking soda. But we're here to have fun, right? All right, so I have these I have these springs, but I only have one of each size. So to get two legs out of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them in half. And that'll give me two of the same diameter spring. But I still need a little piston part. I still need a little piston to put inside of it. So I'll go ahead and chuck that up in my rotary tool and use a file to grind it down. Please be careful if you're gonna try something like this. After that was done, I could use the wick of the lighter to fill that smaller spring. I think that's looking pretty good. These little pieces will be his feet. And he's got little robot toes. Drill out a hole for the leg to go into. And we'll glue it in place. Well, now he's got a leg to stand on. I noticed that the wick was a really good material to make rivets from. So slice them thin and we got ourselves some nice rivets. They're a bit oversized, but I think they fit the aesthetic of this robot. All right, so the connection between the leg and the torso uh, was done with these 
larger spring halves. So again, I cut the one spring I had in half and then glued it on with some baking soda and super glue. And this is what I have left. And I, of course, saved this junk. And I got two pieces back there of the plastic still left over. I'll use a few of the last bits uh, for some more detail. And of course use some more of that wick to make rivets. Now what I'm doing is I am taking the leftover chunks of plastic and garbage and I'm making a little base for him to stand on here. If you glue on top of some parchment paper, it, the super glue doesn't stick. It's pretty convenient for something like this. And here's the base. All primed up, ready to go. We'll go half and half white and black to make a nice gray. And water it down a bit over the junk piles. I darkened that gray up a little bit more with some more black to go over the parts that I wanted to make uh, a metallic. So the idea here was just to get a good mix of the colors that I'm going to use. So we'll have uh, metallic areas that look like the more mechanical parts. Back to the base. That's dried. We're going to use some Mr. Weathering Color Realistic Rust. This is enamel based. It's a little bit stinky, but it does a pretty good job. I wanted to add a little pop of color. So we got our chunks of some kind of metal. And then I picked out a couple rivets with black which is a really great undercoat for this shimmering silver craft paint. Did a little dry brushing and I painted over those metallic chunks with my silver. Finish them off with a black wash and a light tan dry brush on top of those junk piles. And it was good to go. So back to the robot, I want the base color to be a really, really light beige. And I mixed up a 4 to 1 white paint to this yellow ochre. Uh, and I actually had to go back and add two more parts of white. So this mix is 6 to 1 white and yellow ochre. And I think it ended up being the perfect off-white cream color that I wanted. This will be the main color of the robot. And the accent colors are this smoky green. And I want to do an orange for the other color. Hey, look who's, what, what are you doing here? Look at that little guy. All right, get out of here. Okay, for the orange, I'm mixing equal parts, deep yellow and scarlet. and I wanted to mask off a stripe on the torso, just to break it up. But it's a large surface. And then I just went about picking out areas that I thought would look good and evenly spaced out. And you can see I ignored my masking on one side. I think the stripe was a little bit too narrow, so I widened it. And this orange probably took, uh, I don't know, let's see, probably two to three coats, depending on the area, to get a nice deep orange red. The final color actually looks a bit more red than orange. Now that that black and gray is all dry, I took that shimmering silver craft paint and uh, dry brushing over the black. I also took the time to paint his sword in the silver. And the next dry brush was that same 
smoky green, kind of like a pale blue color. And I dry brushed all over. Next was the weathering steps. Uh, yeah, these Tamiya powders are okay. Uh, I really like the soot. This black color you can make them look all dirty and dingy from climbing around in these rubble piles. And unfortunately, the black wash weathering stage was all out of focus or out of frame. So, if you want to see weathering, go check out one of my other builds. Here are the pieces. Base, two arms, a head, and a body. And now it is time to put him together. I'm really happy with how this guy turned out. I think it's just the right mix of dirty and grungy and cute and yeah, I just, I really like the character that he has, especially the head. I think the face of this guy is just really came out well. The left arm there with the, the hand is a bit, it's not fragile. The, the connection to the upper arm, it doesn't want to stay in that hole. Uh, I, I think eventually I'm going to glue this guy into a pose, but I can't decide what pose I like at the moment. So for now, his arms are still movable. Obviously the, the right arm with the sword doesn't need to be glued. It's a pretty tight fit. But looking back, I think I probably should have I don't know, figured out a, a way to make these joints tighter. The head is another one that the neck is just pretty loose on the body. But you can see here, turned out pretty awesome. And the base, the base turned out pretty cool too. It's a lot more subdued than I originally thought it was going to be, but I think that works even better. Uh, you know, all the focus is on the robot. But if you look at the base, there's definitely detail to see. Thanks for sticking with me through this build. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope maybe it inspires you to, to pick up a lighter or some other piece of trash you have lying around and seeing what you can make out of it. That's gonna be all for this video. Thanks for subscribing and always commenting down below. I appreciate those comments. I like reading them and responding to you there. Have a great day, be safe, and I'll see you on the next build.